got Lily Marsden up to the stage. She's going to be talking about third wave feminism and some of the issues that we see, some of the socialist concepts, and uh, how we don't want to become this sort of society. You're stepping on my shit. All right. All right, That's what you get with this capitalist competition. You get the best megaphone possible. <laughs> so, my name is Lily Marsden. I write for rightwinganarchist.com. I'm here to talk to you about women's rights because, believe it or not, I'm not a misogynist. I believe in women's rights. And I believe that we should stand up for them. I believe throughout history, when oppressive regimes have risen, whether it be the Nazis, the communists, regimes like this have always caused suffering and destruction, and they've always compromised women's rights. And as a woman who lives in the first world, a society liberated from evils like child marriage, lack of education, a lack of opportunity to work, I feel it is my duty to stand up against anything that would compromise my or any other woman's right to life and liberty. If this was what feminism meant, I would be a feminist. But now we live in a society where feminism is the establishment. We live in a society where Emma Watson can address the UN and talk about feminism, and it is widely received. Where the Women's March last year in Washington, D.C. was the largest single-day protest in U.S. history. It seems like we have widespread support for women's rights, but we need to be clear on what women's rights we're standing up for. If the modern definition of feminism clearly stood up for the rights of all women, then why are conservative women like myself and those who do not fall into the right section of the population kicked out of events for supporting for supporting the wrong things why do we not care about all women's opinions why must you be a socialist or a liberal in order to stand up for women's rights why do we need the government as an ally why can't we not stand up for rights on our own why were pro-life women kicked out of the women to women's march last year in dc why are female celebrities who come out against feminism ridiculed by the media? We are liberated women in the world, in the first world. Why can we have only one take on society? I am often told that I'm harboring internalized misogyny for my opinions, only doing it for male attention, or I'm brainwashed into believing such things by religious leaders. For many feminists, it seems difficult to believe that an individual can have different opinions than theirs to believe that women's rights can exist without support from the state. That's because we're dealing with a new definition of feminism, one that is not based on reality but on a narrative, and it's a Marxist narrative. They've renamed the Marxist classes of society. They've renamed the bourgeoisie, the patriarchy, and they've renamed the proletariat themselves, the feminists, the allies. And apparently, according to this definition, Women are always oppressed. Women's are, women are always on the bottom of the stack. That's right. That's true. Woo! Why is it true? Are all men oppressing all women? Or are we really individuals? Should we really be able, should we really believe that one class is on top and one class is on the bottom? Or is it more complex than that? At first it might seem like this is an extreme idea, but it is not an extreme concept and it's infiltrating our society. If there is such a thing as the, as the patriarchy, why are there successful women? Why are there women who have become CEOs and successful people in America in the first place? So if we had a true system of oppression, this would not happen. So why do women make 75% of what men Because of personal decisions. We ought to be standing up for women's rights to make their own decisions. We should not force them to be equal because the greatest injustices in history have happened when we force people to be equal to each other instead of allowing them to pursue their own path in life. This Marxist idea has invaded our schools, it's invaded our public spaces. There were people at our last Resist Marxism event holding hammer and sickle flags, wearing jackets with Mao on it, who got angry at me when I said millionaires are people. There are people out there who would dehumanize men because they see them as the upper class and they are the lower class. And that's their only definition of reality. Robin Morgan, an editor from Ms. Magazine, was once quoted saying, I believe man-hating is an honorable and viable political act, that the oppressed have a right to class hatred against the class that is oppressing them. At a Boston Free Speech rally, I was ridiculed for saying that men should have rights too. Not content to rally about, rally around their own causes, feminists often have to shut down MRA events as well. They see any, any effort to support the other side as a threat to their own because they see this bilayered view of society. 
And to the people who believe that you have a right to hate an entire class of people based on their gender, can you really look at a stranger you've never met and hate them because of what they represent when you don't even know them? Is every man guilty from birth just because of how they were born? I know I might be accused of making a straw man of the other side, but I've seen this in my college. I've seen this published from the feminist majority, a company that sponsors U.S. senators. But when you view this society, when you view society as class warfare, you only distill an individual down to their class, race, and gender. Their ideas no longer matter. It's all about how they appear on the surface, and that is why, as soon as we walk into a rally, we're called Nazis. We're called these names without by people who do not listen to us. This kind of thinking, when applied to economic classes, caused mass arrests in the Soviet Union. And we cannot let this become the new definition of women's rights. This new definition has even ruined the lives of the innocent. In 2014, a college student named Emma Silkwicks made headlines when she began carrying around her mattress at Columbia University as a protest against a man she claimed had raped her. Though no, this man was proven innocent, she continued to be sponsored by the media and even spoke at the State of the Union address while well, the man who was proved innocent had his reputation destroyed. I've seen similar events at my own school, Berkeley College of Music. During a protest against sexual assault, a friend of mine stood up to say that he hoped that those who are accused could be proven guilty without him. They could be proven guilty beyond a shadow of a doubt. So everyone would know they were kicked out of the school for a good reason. He knew that just an accusation of assault, whether or not it was true, could ruin a reputation. The statement was immediately met with backlash from the assembled crowd, who claimed that he was perpetuating rape culture by not believing the victim immediately. Ladies and gentlemen, do we really, really live in a society where we would suspend an individual's right to be innocent until proven guilty in the name of women's rights? We cannot let the stand for women's rights turn into an oppression contest between genders. We cannot collectivize ourselves. As Ayn Rand once said, the smallest minority is the individual. So in order to truly be an intersectional feminist, you must stand up for minority rights, and minority rights are individual rights. So if you want to stand up for women's rights, stand up for the right of a woman to say whatever she pleases. Stand up for the right of a woman to defend herself, to stand up for herself and her personal beliefs. Don't collectivize us. Don't force all women to think like you when it's not true. You got it. That's it. Woo! I thought you were. I thought you were finding your words there at the end.